everybody, what's up? Thanks so much for joining me on this very special vlog as I head out to one of my favorite farms, Lazy Bee Gardens in the lovely Winthrop, Washington. So join me as we travel along Highway 530 to go check out this fabulous facility. Let's go. As promised, we are at one of my favorite facilities, Lazy Bee Gardens! I'm so excited to be here. We're gonna have the owner, Matt, joining us. He's gonna talk about the facility, uh, why Lazy Bee does some of the things they do, what it means to be clean green, what like all these tarps are for. Um, we're gonna break it down. So Matt, come and join me. Let's talk tarps. So thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, first things first, I love Lazy Bee Gardens, but um, tell all of my fans out there and people that are watching, you know, what is Lazy Bee Gardens? What are kind of some of your guys' core values? You know, we're, we're really, devoted to sustainable farming practices and part of that is using the sun for flowering our cannabis. Okay. And working with native soils in a living soil environment. Um, I feel like you guys really set an industry standard of, you know, being clean, green, um, you know, really good for the environment. I guess tell me a little bit about that. What are some of the things you guys do? We, you know, we plant right in the ground. Um, we're growing in a no-till no system or no-till beds, mm -hmm. uh, meaning we're not rototilling our soil every year. In the end, your soil will, will get like a healthier and healthier as it goes, as opposed to... Is that like what all the clover, these companion crops are for? Clover is nitrogen fixing, so not only is it providing nitrogen nutrient to the plant, it also helps to um, aerate the soil, it helps to retain the moisture, so we don't have to water, we only have to water like once every 10 days to 14 days. Oh wow. Um, One thing I noticed that I haven't seen before, you guys have foil at the base of your plants. What's up with the foil? Yeah, so... We had we like a couple freak in scenarios oven? where voles or mice or whatever it was decided it'd be a good idea to sharpen their teeth on the stalks. Yeah. yeah. They basically took down a whole like a whole row. That's so as opposed to like just trying to kill them off, we just protect the plants. So like looking at all these beautiful plants, they're very green. You guys are clean green certified. Yeah. What are some things that you guys do to be clean green certified? Well, beyond all organic inputs. Uh, going into our soil, we also do not spray a bunch of chemicals. I mean, with pesticides and sprays, you you know you spray with all natural things through veg, natural essential oils. Um, you know all these hoops and there's a bunch of tarps and sandbags. You guys light dep, and a lot yeah. of times people ask, "What's up with light depping? What is light depping?" Uh, explain that to people. What is what is um, light depping, and why do you guys do it? Well, the plant's natural life cycle is based on how many hours of light it's getting. Okay. This is why when you see in an indoor crop, you would see guys on you know in veg cycle with 18 to 24 hours of light, and when they want to go into flower, they go to 12, 12. Because in nature, as the days start getting shorter and the nights start getting longer, that tells the plant winter's coming. I have to reproduce, which is the whole point. It's flowering. It's it's trying to reproduce. That's what its in essence full function is. Okay. Um. So by using tarps and blacking them out, you know, whenever we want on a 12 hour cycle, we can induce flower at a much more favorable time of year for flowering outside. I mean, being in the Methow Valley, we have pretty adverse 
uh, October's. Yeah. What's, yeah, up, what's, well, up with Win what's up with Winthrop? What's with the weather out Winthrop here? Winthrop is a very intense, short growing season. Okay. Uh, it's cold really late, and then it's cold really early in the fall. But it was hot today. It was like almost oh, yeah. 100. Oh yeah, extremely hot in the summertime, but then it cools off really fast. You know, we'll get snow in October, early October at times, mm -hmm. and we'll get frost in September early, early September, yeah. potentially. We've we actually have had some like quarter size hail storms come down and completely, well, took. we had a row that was coming out of harvest and it you know, it just ripped it to shreds. Oh no! <laughs> so Mother Nature was like, not today, Lazy Bee! So this is Wi-Fi OG, correct? Yes, it is. This and is we one have of a my really favorite. unique phenol of it. Unique and just it's got a really high osamine content, uh, which is specific terpene. What I get out of it and what everyone who smokes it gets out of it, what's unique about it is it's very focused. Mm. You know, it, it's a sativa dominant. This particular pheno seems to be a sativa I dominant. Know. Not necessarily because it's uh, a racy strain, but because it's very cerebrally active, mm -hmm. uh, it's a good thinking. Like if you want to sit down and write music, or or write, or do something like yeah. that, it's a really good strain for that. For like sitting down, focusing on like a project. These are the nets that you're talking about that yes. you put on to protect yes. against the and hail. We have a couple of different kinds that we've used. Tesla Tower. I love Tesla Tower. What are the genetics on Tesla Tower? Tesla Tower is a, a the Mendocino snowcap. There's two snowcaps in the world. It's the okay. sativa dominant snowcap crossed with our Wi-Fi. It's a racy, racy sativa. Yum. How big is your guys' farm? You're a tier three. So we have our canopy maxed out at 30,000 square feet. Okay. Um, we actually have it measured really well because we're in hoops, so we, we know exactly how much space we're growing on, which is, is good. Mm -hmm. um, fenced in, we probably have about an acre. Okay. So in 30,000 square foot of canopy space. Okay, so you guys have about an acre. About an acre, 30,000 square foot worth of actual plant canopy. How many plants? I've had people ask me that question. Is how plants, many plants you guys have? It fluctuates between 45 and 5,500 per year. One last thing I want to check out before we head inside to yeah. look at the drying stuff is this year you guys have a greenhouse. Yes. Uh, why the greenhouse versus the, oh, you call it open air because it's all sun open grown. Open air, right. It's yeah. all sun grown. We don't use any, any lighting in the flowering process, so it's all sun grown whether it's in a greenhouse or in an open air hoop house. Yeah, the greenhouse, okay. uh, the first of many to come, is more or less for us to do more early season and late season crops. We're really kind of testing what genetics like greenhouse. You know, not all genetics want to be in a greenhouse. Some of them <laughs> like, the, like the open air better. Some of them like the diffused light you get in the greenhouse better. So we're kind of exploring it's genetics science in experiment. here. One thing I want to ask you in here is, um, you know, what was your background? Like, what is your history growing? I, I'd heard that you grew medically, something about growing for your dad. Tell yeah. me that story. Um, well, I was in Utah, uh, playing in the snow, enjoying that. And um, my, my father got sick, and a friend of mine down there had asked if I had heard about Rick Simpson oil. What was your, dad, him. What was your dad sick with? It was stage four thyroid cancer. It had metastasized into his lymph nodes a little bit, but it hadn't gotten too far. He had gone through a couple surgeries. He did go through radiation, his body had rejected it, and they were getting ready to throw him into chemotherapy. And that was about the time our first crop came down, and we had already been like, yeah, let's try this out. You know, what, what can it hurt? Like, that's a lot a of times, that, that's one of the things that always gets me is like, well, why not try it? And so he started eating that, and didn't go into the chemo, and you know, he started going to the doctor, they started being like, you know, your levels are okay, come back in six months, come back in six months, eventually turned out to come back next year. And it's, he's been off the oil now, I think, for four, four to five years. Um, he still goes in once a year and they tell him he's okay. Yeah, he's living happy and healthy. So, wow. That's kind of where our start and our drive, the passion to grow the plant, originally came from. Awesome. What an awesome story. Not making medical claims, just your experience. So we are here in your guys' new weed room. This is a new build out since I've been here last. Yeah, um, what storage you, room. Yeah, what are you guys doing in here? What's in all these bins? Well, we have our bulk, um, bucked but yet untrimmed material over here, pre-tested. This is all of our bulk weight. You know, if you look in some of these, yes. we would have just bins of untrimmed. Cannabis, and we keep this we keep this room humidity and um, climate con you know humidity and temperature controlled so it stays cold and cures properly in dark bin. And then for over here is once we do trim the pot um, and it's ready for sale, it's tested and trimmed at this point. Then we store it in these with humidity packs to keep them um, just the right right moisture level. Mm, what strain is this? That I believe is strawberry diesel. Mm, that smells so good. Thank you so much for showing us your weed room. Let's head up to the roof because it's almost sunset and I feel like that's one of the best views in the house. Yeah, let's Perfect. Do it. All right, so I guess 
First of all, wow, let's just take in this view for a moment. This is amazing. This is my favorite spot. This is a pretty solid spot to be. Um, I guess, you know, where would you like to see the future of cannabis? You know, like you're really a pioneer in this. You've been in the industry probably longer than a lot of people that are now getting into the game. You know, where would you love to see cannabis 10 to 15 years from now? Well, I'd love to see it federally legal. I'd like to stop seeing people incarcerated for a plant. It should be treated as medicine. It should also be just treated as a plant. Mm -hmm. um, I would also really love to see the industry move t more towards sustainable farming practices, more towards organics, um, more towards cleaner growing practices, um, less chemical use. It's a really fun industry to be a part of. 90% of the people you meet are just as passionate as you are about the same thing, so it's really easy to to like connect with them and I like that and I hope that continues. It really is a community like the people just in this cannabis community are so welcoming and supportive and like really people are all in it together even though well, we're yeah. friends you know we're giving each other tips it's, I don't know when it became a thing where all of a sudden it was like everyone's out for each other. Well I just appreciate you you know thank you so much for having us out here. Thanks for Thank you, you know, Lazy Bee. You guys have been such a huge supporter of what I do and, you know, the growth of my channels. And I just, I love your message and what you guys are all about. Uh, you know, I want all my followers to go and follow Lazy Bee. Go and follow this beautiful facility. So you guys should definitely go, go give Lazy Bee some love. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lazy Bee Gardens. If you want more information, especially about their strains, the genetics, the terpene profiles, check out LazyBeeGardens.com. Um, and if you're in Washington State, 100% look for these guys in I-502 retailers because they are hands down one of the best on the markets. And, you know, I think this, this proves that their garden speaks for itself.